my name is Abraham Milano. I'm a software developer. Um, full stack development is uh, basically what I do. Um, and I'm currently uh, at Cadena as a sales engineer. I started doing consulting. Um, my career started as consulting for insurance companies, um, pretty much doing web development um, and using technologies like ASP, uh, .NET, and later um, Java Enterprise Java Beans, uh, using databases like Oracle and Postgres. And at some point during my career, Back in 2012, I, for the first time, I started a, a startup with a couple of partners that was called Data, which was, a, or which is a visual uh, social platform for visual, visual artists. For a long time, we were just a Web2 uh, project. Uh, originally, kind of like the focus or the idea was uh, LinkedIn for visual artists. But one tool that we developed for that platform quickly became really popular, which was the drawing tool. And we realized that uh, people were creating a lot of content with it. So we tried to monetize it. But usually what happened was that the artists really got a little in the sense of royalties. They probably never got like very much a value for what for the time and effort that we put in. And at some point, like three, four years after we created this startup, we found out about Ethereum and we started developing in 2017 using the ERC-20 contracts that the CryptoPunks uh, team had used. Uh, we basically um, added royalties to it uh, because we actually wanted to enforce royalties being paid for the, for the artists. And that was ver the very first time I actually coded smart contracts. Eventually with 721, we doubled down on the royalties aspect and we also tried to fix uh, an issue that was very, very um, common with smart contracts in Ethereum, which was that most of the smart contracts were using uh, the same contract to store data. Just upgrading those contracts uh, was always um, difficult because the business logic was intimately tied to that data. So what I tried to do at that point was basically um, separate the business, the, the business logic on the smart contract from the data structures. So we, we, we did our 2017, uh, our 721 contracts using that approach, which is kind of like an MVC approach for for development, um, but using smart contracts for it. And after a while, I took a break from from uh, Ethereum Solidity until 20 and blockchain in general until, until 2021 when I started my second startup, which was the DNA, the database for for native uh, database for database for native assets, which my former two former partners. And this time we used Cadena for it. So that was my first introduction to Cadena and Pact. The one thing that I really, uh, that really excites me about, about blockchain, basically the, the capability for, for it to be, I mean, this is completely decentralized, right? So you can just create your smart contract and everybody can just use it. There is no need for oversight other than making sure that the smart contract is doing what it's supposed to be doing and that there are no um, vulnerabilities attached to it. Since I started, there has always been an evolution to blockchain. Uh, the technology has been maturing a lot. And the one thing that I see in the future, in the in the, in the near future, uh, which is a great opportunity, is actually making blockchain available to the general public. There is still complications. There are still obstacles that prevent uh, blockchain from being uh, fully adopted by regular users. Working as a sales engineer um, for Cadena gives me an opportunity to move forward the technology um, into that massive adoption uh, while working with our partners.
before Cadena, since I was developing on it, you know, just being part of like a, a startup, you always have the challenge of you have to do a lot uh, with the little resources you have because you're starting from scratch. Those challenges basically put me in a position in which I've seen and I've experienced the, the development cycle from multiple points of view. And I think that is definitely something that gives me a, a good understanding of what the community in general needs uh, from the point of view of like what is to develop using Cadena, uh, which is a great opportunity to improve just like the, the, the little things that will make the developers' lives easier and then definitely improve and, and make, make, them, make them easier for them to move quickly when developing on Cadena. There are a lot of hidden gems uh, regarding the things that um, that have been developed for for the community to be used. So one of my goals is definitely helping improve documentation, help, helping improve uh, onboarding uh, mostly, uh, trying to make that learning curve uh, a little less steep. So people can get into doing and deploying and, and, and creating dApps uh, easier and faster. So yeah, focus on, on documentation and, and, and a really focused approach into being that bridge uh, between the internal developers and our partners. From my time with DNA, um, a lot of our challenges came in the form of like uncertainty of like what we're building and how is it going to be used for, for our target clients. We already had a use case, uh, which was uh, Shulin, the jewelry company in Austria. But that's definitely something that is very, very specific. So the idea was trying to be flexible enough in providing a solution that could be adapted for them, but also could be easily adapted for other other potential uh, partners or clients. A lot of those challenges also came at odds with what was already developed by Cadena that could be used by us. So from the point of view of me currently at Cadena, it is about understanding what are, what are the challenges of the of the current partners and how I can actually uh, be of help to them. And it can go all the way from finding the best approach for them, uh, uh, whether it is like understanding what their business is, um, or even like doing some uh, auditing. Uh, for how they're approaching the solution and providing the best way forward for them. Uh, just like notching a little bit uh, on one side or, or another to get things to get into place. Um, so it is definitely about the tools that we provide for, for the developers and how they use them. I think it is about looking at different problems. It's definitely, I would say, perhaps energizing because I really like uh, figuring out the stuff in general. So you have to be, because you're working with different different types of projects, you have to be very flexible. That's rewarding. And another, another aspect is just knowledge uh, sharing. I'm always being a person that doesn't really like to hold on stuff. Like if I know something, I'd rather share it and learn from your point of view, uh, what you can get from it. And at the same time, uh, I'm also very excited about hearing what your point of view is uh, so I can digest it and put a spin on it and also, you know, give it back. Uh, because I think that a lot of the the things that we can build are definitely, are definitely better built if you are, you know, like adding I guess it's kind of like a, kind of like Dada is, um, which is a lot of collaborative work that makes the whole better than the sum of, of its parts. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely the fact that every little 
grain of sand, it makes the pile bigger. So it's, it's just about, for me at least, I, I get satisfaction of just helping, helping the community. Yeah, so in the next five years, I mean, we, we've seen a lot of uh, improvements generally in the technology. Katen already solved the trilemma. And then there is a fourth issue that uh, we've discussed before, which is definitely adoption. The one, the one key issue for adoption is making the technology accessible to the users. Um, you don't really need to be very technical to use it. Or actually, you actually need to be technical or you need to know a lot of stuff uh, to be able to use blockchain in general. There are issues uh, regarding like people usually don't know uh, or forget passwords. Now you also have to uh, keep track of seed phrases or, or private keys. So that's definitely something that scares a lot of people. In the future, probably in the next two, three years, let's say five, I see Cadena improving in that, in the adoption problem. And I'm really excited about Sparky in this, in this regard, because I'm pretty sure that Sparky is going to be something that is going to make definitely very accessible blockchain te technology for users. And I can't wait for our partners to start adopting and implementing the Sparky into their products. So yeah, I started as a Solidity developer. As I said, I basically uh, work on the ERC-20 contracts that we use for data. Pretty much was already done because it was the standard. Uh, what we did was adding embedding royalties, enforced royalties into it. And then with the 721 contracts that I was working on, I tried to fix some issues that I was personally having with how contracts were written in Solidity, specifically trying to get the separation between logic and, and data. So a lot of the things that I I was doing with our 721 contracts were some stuff that when DNA, with my, when my partners at DNA approached me to look into Cadena and to look into Marmalade back in November 2021, I believe, I saw a lot of those things reflected into Marmalade and also saw a lot of the, the things that I was trying to solve in PACT. So I, I immediately knew that PACT was completely different, that their approach, I mean, Cadena was completely different, that the, the approach that we lens to use for like the creation of the technology were definitely trying to solve the issues that Ethereum had and that's something that I that it definitely vibed at the moment with. So it was very exciting for me to the idea of working on a blockchain that just out of the out of the package was already better compared to what EVM at the moment was. So yeah, I, I guess I guess definitely that, that that's it. Then I started working with Pact, just having Marmalade as a really good standard that was customizable enough uh, without having to copy and paste, uh, which is mostly what people do on EVM environments, just copy and paste a standard and redeploy it. With Marmalade, you didn't have to do that. In any case, if you wanted some something to be customized or adapted to what to your particular needs, then you had to work just on a policy that your token would use. That basically took out of our shoulders as developers a lot of responsibilities of having to worry about what to do on the smart contracts. And instead of focusing on the blockchain side of, of the business, because that was already taken care of, you could definitely then focus on the infrastructure that you needed to build for your product to make use of these of these solutions in blockchain. So it, it was uh, it, it, it just makes sense for me. Um, so the, yeah, it was it was a no brainer, I guess. So just knowing, I mean, when when you're working on something, you're definitely looking at that something from your very specific point of view, and it's always beneficial for the for the person or for the for the organism that is building something to know what the perspective is from the from the from their users. So just bringing that knowledge or that experience is 
something that always, always benefits uh, any organization into growing stronger and better uh, and, a be and making a better product in the future for, for their users. So I think it's very, very useful from the point of view of being a developer and having experience the good things which we can improve on and definitely not the, the not so good things that definitely need some work on. And also, you know, it's it's also about the empathy because I've been there, so I know how it is, for instance, being stuck and, and not having the answers because perhaps um, the documentation doesn't have it. So it's just, just that little touch of like, I understand you, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm, I'm just going to... I don't want you to be in that situation uh, because I've been there. So I'll, I'll make my best effort to help you through it. Yeah, my my, my biggest hope is definitely to be um, a champion for, for our partners in general, for the community. Every day I'm, I'm, I'm still like trying to do, uh, I'm not trying, I'm using our, prod our products, um, I'm using our libraries, I'm using the resources we have to make sure that I can figure out where like the weak, weak spots are. So if someone is getting new into the into the ecosystem, doesn't have to go through all the all the issues or all the the pain points that most of the community has gone through. Um, and, and the hope is definitely to increase the adoption. Success is gonna be for me to be helpful to any anyone that needs uh, to ask a question and just being completely ready and generous with the time for that question to be answered. I'd rather be overly explicit than just drape information and letting you figure it out. The faster you get that issue outside, if, it's, if it is not something that is core to your, to your uh, business, but is actually just being a, an obstacle for you, the faster we get that obstacle out of the way, the better for, for both of us.